It's our peanut butter, our peanut butter water beer. Hi guys, I want to thank anybody that is hopping on to listen to us today to our latest lockdown report. Um, we have Alvarium Beer Company joining us today. We have Mike um, on with us now. And I'm Michelle, and that's John over there on the left-hand side of the screen uh, showing uh, for CT Beer Tours. We have a pandemic going on, so we thought it would be a great idea to kind of sit down, talk with the breweries, see what their thoughts are, what's going to happen when we have to attempt to open up. Right, so let's kick off with how has the pandemic affected the company and what has Alvarium done to to continue staying operational? Yeah, we've uh, adapted pretty fast. We have our own canning line. Uh, so that's one thing that uh, is differentiating us from a lot of breweries out there. And out of the some odd hundred breweries in the state of Connecticut, not many people have their own canning line. They can generate 16 ounce cans. A lot of people do crawlers, but uh, we basically shifted all of our production two cans. Obviously, we couldn't do anything else. Uh, the draft accounts basically went down to zero. And we're still working with some issues on that, what we're planning to do with all those kegs in the market. But um, yeah, we shifted everything to 16-ounce cans. Our designers, uh, Box 8 out of New Haven and uh, Cat Manning, both of them been very great to us. They've been turning around labels real quick. I'm getting a lot of them printed and uh, doing everything that way. The online store is basically a huge thing that uh, we adapted to, too. Uh, as soon as we are allowed to do that, like within 24 hours, we built an entire online store through Square, loaded all of our inventory on there and uh, started selling. It's a little, a uh, couple days to get us going, a little bit of a rough start to it, uh, managing all that stuff, but uh, we did some pretty major releases with it. Um, we did our bourbon barrel aged peanut butter beer, mm -hmm. went over pretty flawlessly on our end. Uh, to try to control like the uh, the amount of people that coming in and out of here and then still try to be able to get that beer out to the public and not cause too much disruption on our end. We've adapted um, and it's working out pretty well for us. As for the overall brewery, brewery health, uh, we haven't really laid anybody off. So that's a good thing. Even all of our bartenders, uh, we've offered many of them uh, if not all of them, uh, hours on the side doing projects around here. A lot of stuff that we've been putting off for a long time, you know, painting, cleaning, building small things, stuff like that. So we've got everybody involved in uh, kind of just making headway through all those things. And between that, we end up, another big thing we did is that we opened up seven days a week. So normally we're shut down Monday and Tuesday, we run more production those days. And now we decided to open seven days a week from 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. for all takeout to go sales. Yeah. And uh, been running pretty solid like that for the past, uh, I mean, it's been coming up on a month and a half now of uh, tap rooms have been shut down. So I've noticed that you guys have done, like you just mentioned, your one of the beer releases. Do you have anything new coming up that you want to make people aware of? Yeah, we actually, um, I just canned this one this morning. This is uh, El Cabron, kind of in cheers of a Cinco de Mayo. It's our Mexican lime lager. Perfect timing. The, the thing about beer is like it takes three to four weeks to uh, plan all these things out. So we already had a lot of the stuff planned. We had ingredients already purchased so we said you know you know, kind of screw it let's keep stick with it and then uh and so usually we, what we're doing was like canning half a batch and then kegging the other half to put for draft and you know tap room here we just can the entire thing this time up to all the labels and everything so it's worked out really well we had a good response we just launched it today we just brewed kettle sour we did it last summer um kind of launched our kettle sour series for the heavily fruited sours uh, our bomb pop popsicle sour so we'll be uh, releasing that in about two weeks or so i uh, would just finish brewing it this morning so it's got about some fermentation time and some cold conditioning time, stuff like that. So that'll be coming out in a couple of weeks. And then um, I think next week we're going to be releasing uh, Cluster Nutter. It's our peanut butter, our peanut butter water beer. My fan favorite. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things we noticed is of the um, the collaboration beers that we've seen that's kind yeah. of coming out. So we saw that the um, the Brewers Guild came out with one um, that you guys were a part of. Um, you want to speak a little bit about that and yeah. if you have anything new coming up? Yeah, I've been recently elected to vice president of the Brewers Guild, and we volunteered this year to do the, uh, the collaboration beer together. Usually, this beer was supposed to be released for the Brewers Guild Festival um, that was planned back at the end of uh, March, I believe so. You know, we were going to be kind of debuting that beer there it was going to be like the entrance beer obviously it's a pilsner so it's a lager style beer it takes a good five to six weeks to make so we brewed this beer a month before this whole thing i mean i before any everybody even knew about anything that was going on with this pandemic or you know the virus coming in so like when we did brew this beer there was no chance like there was nothing in anybody's mind that you know that this was going to happen so like anything else we had to adapt cat manning uh is our uh, market membership marketing coordinator 
She's actually a very good graphic design artist as well. And we said, all right, we have 500 gallons of this beer sitting in the tank. What do we do with it? Decided like, all right, well, let's make a label for it. Uh, we're going to kind of do some label, like a small release of it too. But we decided, hey, we're going to take this whole 500 gallons and we're going to label it and can it all. And then we took a basically a, a dollar from every four pack that was sold and uh, basically donated to the uh, Restaurant Hospitality Association for Connecticut that's helping out uh, bartenders and uh, restaurant uh, folks of that range. And there's a lot of other people doing that too that with the uh, other half altogether beer. Mm-hmm. Um, so people doing that too. It was just something that we uh, kind of adapted to and you know, with the ever-changing market in this business, uh, the pandemic situation, we had to adapt to it. So we did it and worked out really well. Uh, went out really, really good. We offered it up first to all the breweries within the board of directors if they wanted to sell at their place. We got a good response of that. Even somebody outside the directors, board of directors bought some to resell at their place to get some uh, variety of product in. And we released the rest of our distribution network. Still, there's a few stores out there that might have it, but it was about 130 cases or so. And it went, you know, within a week or a week about that. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that, how it like flew right off the shelves. I thought it was great. Yeah. The, the local support has been outstanding. I mean, the customers that we've had, we we have like 260 mug club memberships and we're doing stuff for them too as well. And everybody's coming out and supporting us. The sales and revenue that are coming in every day are definitely helping us out and keeping us everything going. It's great. Uh, I really appreciate that uh, everyone out there coming from myself and the other two owners of Alvarium. The the support is, it's great. I mean, it's it's the same thing we're trying to do for ourselves. We usually get lunch for our staff every Friday and now we're going to make sure and going to local restaurants, local pizzerias, Mm -hmm. that type of stuff. We're getting that. We're staying, even a lot of the stuff uh, that's closed, we're just going around and seeing who's open and going right off of that. Yeah, I know. I feel like I'm supporting people more now than I, I ever have. You know what I mean? I, like I, was, I, you know, I, I had that same feeling. It's like the more and more this yeah. is happening. It's like it, going out and buying a lot of lo- more local products and sticking that way. And it's, yeah. it's, been, it's good. Yeah, it is very good. Other than like the curbside pickup, do you have anything else that you want to specifically mention to kind of help support you guys? Um, Just say, if you see our beer at uh, any type of package or liquor store, um, pick it up. I mean, it's a great product that we're, uh, we're very diligent on our canning process to really preserve the quality of the beer. And we have meters and uh, sensors all over the machine and we're doing quality checks as we run because we're canning a lot more than we used to. Uh, normally we only can about eight to 10,000 cans a week. Now we're doing 25,000 cans a week. So we're going a lot faster with that. But it's, yeah, if you see some stuff out there, uh, definitely try it out. We just released a beer called The One I Love. It has Nelson Salven and uh, Citra in it. We've never canned that beer before. Uh, it's always been a draft only product. We have another one called OG Platinum. We just came out with that a couple uh, months ago. Uh, that went into cans as well. The mix of stuff that we normally can and the normally put on draft, everything's going to the cans. So there's a lot of new stuff that's coming out uh, as well in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense because then you guys can kind of makes people come back, you know, because they always yeah. want to try the next greatest thing, you know, which is cool. Yep. As far as reopening, I know we've heard, you know, May 20th, that's kind of like the phase one of what's supposed to like start to take place of reopening um you know i mean it's still kind of a lot of it's up in the air of of what the rules and regulations are i know it has to do with a lot of like the outdoor seating what's your thoughts kind of on that it's a tough one i mean um you know working with phil pappas our director of the guild we're still getting trying to get some clarification from the state you know when they first did this uh they released this about a week ago saying hey may 20th is going to be the reopen day you could have some outdoor seating we our outdoor patio holds around like 45 people or so we're still kind of relying on and the, the guild uh, failed to find out what's going on. Because obviously, I think when they did decide this thing, uh, they weren't really thinking about breweries in mind. Uh, a lot of us don't have patios. Um, so it's still, we're still waiting for that. And then we're just going to keep focusing on canning the product as well. Honestly, I don't know if we do open with the patio thing. Um, because it's our layout's a little different than most breweries. I mean, we do have a patio out back, and you guys have been there before, many people have. It's a difficult situation because you got to come into the bar to get the beer, and you got to go back out again, and then mm. it's, it's an odd thing to do. I guess we're going to cross that bridge when we get some more clarification to it. Chances are we're probably not going to reopen the patio just on that May 20th, I and mean, it might be a couple weeks after that. But Yeah, well, modify and adapt like, like you have been, you know? Yep. Um, any last words you um, want to be aware of? Yeah, I mean, I... We've uh, got some big announcements coming on later this year. We've, uh, or we're going to be selling our third anniversary in June, end of June, um, and we're going to be doing a major expansion uh, coming up this summer. Uh, we're still on track with that. We're still sticking with it. We're upgrading our brew house, our tank situation, our chilling system. We're going to be putting a 26 foot tall, 55,000 pound silo outside for grain, piping all that stuff in. We can normally brew around 500 gallons a day, pre-fermented product. We're going to be putting a system that could do almost 2,000 gallons a day. Wow. So we're going to be re- revamping that. Uh, we're 
add a secondary tap room as well. So that holds about 45, 50 people for like private events later on or overflow when we are busy on Friday and Saturday night. So we're still going with all that stuff. We've been working a lot in the background, uh, doing a lot of pre-planning on uh, the whole equipment setup and how the layout's going to work. And uh, we're doing everything pretty uh, intense. What is your guys' plan to start once we're reopening? Are you going to fire back up again? Or I mean, our plan is, I mean, we, we canceled everything up because we had known everything was going to be shut down till mid-May anyway. So we kind of canceled everybody and anybody that has booked anything so far, we've kind of been in touch with yeah. um, just to kind of keep them in the loop. And everybody's pretty good with kind of being flexible and kind of seeing where this goes. But like you guys, we don't know if you can only let in 20 people or 10 people at your at your bar. Do you even want us there? You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's, it's going to be kind of an ongoing the, situation. Yeah, you risk the chance if I have 40 people here already and you guys show up with 20, I'm right. like, I'm kind of screwed. So. I mean, we know, we know when we're coming to visit you, but if you don't have yeah. space for us, you know, it's... So we're kind of just playing it by ear. So, Somebody was talking yeah. about all the fairs too, that a lot of the fairs, fall fairs are already canceling. Yeah, it's a, the, I mean, pretty much every beer fest we had on the schedule is already gone. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's yeah. in a way, it's kind of a good thing for us because we're not, you know, I don't spend a lot of money in product and stuff out there, but it's kind of bad because I lose a lot of the advertisement standpoint. Yeah. So, yeah. But it is what it is. But I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to chat yeah. with us. Um, and for everybody watching, thank you for watching. And don't forget, CT Beer Tours, if they're pouring, we're touring. Cheers, guys. Yep.